platform is uh, key uh, for building applications and then uh, basically delivering business value uh, very quickly. Uh, so we, the roughly agenda, uh, we look at the existing landscape, what are the technology uh, challenges that uh, typical organizations have, and then we look at what are the characteristics we have to consider when we are developing with the platform and what are the advantage uh, such a platform will uh, give you uh, for developing new applications. So first of all, uh, we look, if you look at uh, how businesses solve problems, so you all, all have like business objectives that you need to uh, fulfill end of the day. Uh, so you translate those business objectives into sort of problem statements that you can tackle at the business level. And then you will develop technical solutions to um, find, uh, find uh, also how to get users engaged and then ultimately uh, get more business. And these technical solutions, uh, you, all your customers, uh, partners, and suppliers will use the technical solutions, and that's the sort of the main face or main interface that you have with your customers. So technical solutions becomes very important uh, uh, to, to your core business. And also, I think uh, Sanjeeva's uh, talk also mentioned about you can't really uh, uh, take a hands-off approach to technology. You, uh, in, in, with the digital transformation, uh, initiatives, you have to become a technology companies uh, at some point. And if you look at these technical solutions, uh, these uh, technical solutions typically uh, comprised of multiple systems, uh, and, and it's uh, and and you need to be able to configure them together and then uh, use uh, them to your advantage. So if we take a look, take uh, more detail uh, about how these systems uh, or what are the characteristics uh, they have, they they. Uh, almost all, all the time they have their own architectures in place. And also sometimes they are developed with multiple programming languages, uh, multiple database technologies that you have to integrate. And sometimes uh, you don't have any clear APIs uh, on them to integrate into other systems. And they can have different licenses uh, and also can be a commercial off the shelf product that you buy. Uh, some can be open source projects that you use and then integrate with your existing ecosystems, or sometimes it can be completely custom-made solutions for, for your business scenario. So, but at the, at the end of the day, you have to configure these uh, and then uh, provide a value to your business. Uh, so, challenge, key challenges uh, that you, uh, or that any company will face is that the user experience of existing applications are becoming uh, rapidly uh, evolving and um, making consumers do more uh, with uh, the, the existing tools that they have. So the, the, the most famous example is uh, Uber, where Uber sort of revolutionized how you, uh, the experience that you uh, have uh, getting a taxi. And from Uber to uh, other systems, uh, li like with Netflix and all, uh, people uh, basically don't go most of the time uh, don't go to movie theaters anymore, so we can they, they can stream sort of high definition content into their homes. And also Amazon uh, sort of s slowly changing how do you, uh, from how do you buy diapers to how do you buy your sort of cleaning supplies uh, and so on, so on with these uh, dash buttons and so on. And again, you uh, increase, increasingly you will uh, hear about more and more companies that are sort of putting technology that uh, automate the uh, sort of the existing, uh, maybe the equipment that you have, uh, the equipment that you have uh, in your home, and being able to manage uh, those with a mobile uh, device. So the expectations are basically, consumer expectations are going higher, and typically users expect the same experience from enterprise uh, software as well. And also from a business point of view, the, the technology adoption is basically skyrocketing these days to cloud, to containers, to uh, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, and being able to uh, put out your business functionality through bots uh, and uh, getting new users engaged through different uh, channels. Uh, and a couple of years ago, uh, people were sort of debating uh, about the cloud technologies, whether it makes sense to move your data to the cloud, uh, whether it's secure enough, uh, and so on, 
uh, right now uh, what we uh, usually see is that uh, people are not worried about uh, the security. Uh, people are, of course, worried about security, but more importantly, they are finding ways to uh, secure, your secure their existing data in, in, in the existing cloud environments. And the cloud through the tremendous uh, sort of capability to build applications very quickly and then uh, 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 sort of integrate into existing enterprises as well. And with the pay-as-you-go model, the investment that you have to make is very uh, small. Uh, so even a, a developer or even any anyone with a credit card can uh, get a whole uh, infrastructure from uh, automation to application development to uh, IoT to analytics uh, and so on. And basically, uh, everyone is uh, again trying to become the f uh, become the first at their space uh, to grab additional market share so that they can sort of uh, be the leaders of that uh, particular market uh, segment. And also you have to uh, become a sort of an iterative business, being able to iteratively uh, adapt and iteratively improve functionality as you uh, go along. So we'll uh, talk about that uh, more as well. Uh, so you need some kind of new technology to uh, basically be effective in this uh, digital uh, landscape. So let's uh, talk uh, a little about the digital, uh, sort of the characteristics that you would uh, expect uh, from, uh, uh, from your technical uh, solutions. Uh, so you have to get your business ideas quickly implemented, uh, means that uh, you have to get a, a working uh, solution of your product as quickly as possible to get user feedback and then improve uh, and then go along. And we increasingly talk about uh, the iterative uh, model of uh, developing applications as well as iteratively, iteratively improving the architecture itself. Uh, so probably most of you uh, are already doing iterative development uh, and then uh, going a step beyond that, uh, we talk about this iterative uh, architecture also. So not being able to uh, sort of bog down with all the uh, complex details that you would eventually need uh, from a solution, but uh, sort of a good enough architecture for the f first, uh, let's say, at the initial launch uh, of the application. And then, uh, for example, uh, you can design, the, the architecture can be uh, like uh, good enough for the first three months, and from there onwards, you can decide uh, what would be my architecture for the next uh, six months, next 12 months, and so on. So when the time comes and the technology and the requirement comes, uh, you change your architecture and then uh, you move along. Uh, and also, uh, uh, do you really need, uh, like when you are starting, when you are putting out a business solution, uh, do you need to do geo-distributed uh, high availability across multiple regions? So usually the answer is no, and uh, the customers uh, that we work with uh, uh, are basically uh, follow the same model. Uh, so if you think about uh, all the, the, the requirements uh, that, that you need from one year's time, and then uh, you would uh, basically will not be able to uh, be effective on that space. And also it's important to understand your audience, uh, who, who is your audience when you're developing a technical uh, solution. So, so we'll uh, talk about uh, more on that as well. So having basically all these, uh, uh, all these requirements into a platform uh, uh, so makes sense to provide business value on top of that. And if you look at the business uh, plat capability platform, uh, basically driven through APIs, and I'm probably pretty sure almost all of you know the business uh, value of APIs and uh, is also practicing API uh, ecosystems. Uh, and also being able to integrate into existing business uh, systems that you have, and then uh, get that data to, uh, allow to create new business uh, experience and consumer experiences and uh, composed of uh, small services, so not being able to or not adapting or not buying a big software is a, another key aspect that we talk about when it comes to digital transformation also. So when you are buying uh, like a multi-million dollar uh, thing, then you are sort of bogged down with that and the architecture that the, uh, the, the sort of the software provides. So being able to uh, uh, create uh, composable services uh, is becoming increasingly uh, important. And also being able to leverage your existing user identities and provide new user experiences uh, for grabbing new users. Uh, so deploying into containers uh, is again a very uh, key aspect, being able to uh, deploy your software quickly and then being able to sort of scale out the deployment is uh, important. 
And uh, you need to continuously monitor uh, your service usage and users, uh, where are they coming from, what are they are using, uh, and so on. So the analytics part becomes uh, key uh, as well. Uh, so f li let's uh, go through each, each of the uh, technology areas, and also I have uh, some sample uh, cases as well. Uh, so probably uh, is adapting an API management practice, uh, is it enough? Uh, so usually the answer is no. So the API management practice, uh, when you adapt it, you should align with your business uh, goals. So uh, again, t making an API first approach to design services uh, is important. And as you saw earlier, so with Ballerina, uh, you will have uh, sort of, we are trying to move all the developers into that area so you, you don't have any disconnect between the service interface and the API uh, interface and the, the, the service uh, contract. So basically all three merge uh, to one when you use uh, Ballerina. And uh, of course, how do you control your granularity of uh, API? So when you, you might have a lot of services, do you expose each service as an API or do you have like several high level APIs and then wrap your service logic un under that? So that again, it will depend on your, your, what you are trying to do and uh, what's uh, your business objectives. And when you're using best practices, uh, basically uh, using uh, the best practices as, uh, as it is uh, might not be uh, enough for the use case. So you have to alter and then be able to sort of refine uh, the, the requirements based on the, the business needs. So we'll uh, take a look at an example of uh, driven through an API uh, ecosystem. Uh, so this again, uh, so I have uh, the story uh, down in the slide uh, to the actual story, how Netflix sort of revamped their API. So initially the Netflix API was designed to uh, sort of general developers. So the idea was that uh, the developers will create much more engaging user experiences and Netflix will eventually get more subscribers. But that was not working well. Uh, so Netflix sort of refactored uh, their API uh, to, to uh, suit to uh, uh, the, the Netflix developers who create the UIs. Uh, so now, uh, based on that uh, objective, they have uh, increased their presence uh, to about 1,000 odd devices. And each device uses a specific API. So thousand devices has thousand APIs and each device is using a device specific API. So if you look at that uh, from an API management practice, uh, it's not really a good practice to have uh, an API that's specific to a particular uh, use case or a particular scenario. So usually when people try to adapt an API practice, you try to make the API layer as generic as possible so that you can reuse that API with other uh, systems and other uh, in integrations, but for Netflix clay, a Netflix use case, it's uh, not the uh, uh, approach. Uh, so you have to be able to uh, alter that to align with your business goals to make your case uh, successful. Uh, so when you're talking about the uh, platform, uh, uh, I would like to say it's at a, as a business enablement platform. Uh, that's business enablement platform is designed for your audiences and you align with your business uh, use cases. And uh, each technology area that's uh, uh, there uh, and the uh, sort of the tactical decisions that you take uh, can be for API management and other areas as well, should align with your uh, actual business uh, platform and the business objectives. So integrating into services. So uh, with API management, uh, it's uh, natural to talk about uh, integration into services. Uh, and also means that uh, you are integrating with your existing uh, uh, systems that you have on-prem and maybe also on the cloud, cloud uh, software as a service uh, solutions. Uh, so connectors is again uh, becomes important uh, when it comes to connect, being able to connect very quickly to existing systems and also being able to define integration uh, recipes so, so that other developers can leverage when, uh, when they're introducing new services. And also uh, coming up with a sort of a canonical model for doing transformations, logging, uh, data management is again uh, very important when it comes to providing integration services uh, for your business. And uh, sometimes integration as a, integ uh, using languages that has integration built as first uh, sort of 
uh, first level entities will also help as in the case of uh, ballerina. And composed of pieces, so uh, micro, we talked about uh, microservices. Uh, so microservices is no longer uh, uh, sort of a case where it, it's not based on the size, but it's uh, sort of the uh, scope of functionality that a particular service defines. And uh, usually handle, uh, a microservice will, will handle one business uh, functionality being, and that microservice uh, is easy to deploy, scale, and then uh, test the service. So usually a, a microservice uh, is basically short running. Uh, so the uh, example that Sanjeev took earlier, when you are using Gmail, a container will uh, sort of spin up and then uh, it will span the duration of your session and when you close the browser, it will go away. And this sort of prevent uh, having any app server overhead. Uh, and also you can, uh, moving in the direction of a recomposable services and being able to uh, become a recomposable uh, enterprise. An example for uh, uh, this would be uh, WC2 Carbon. So most of you, I'm pretty sure, have used uh, WC2 products. So, so the, all the products uh, come with this uh, Carbon framework. And uh, the Carbon framework is a composition of a set of uh, OSGI services. Uh, and each service uh, uh, is basically uh, independently written and deployed into the, uh, the runtime. And this framework was designed uh, for WS2 specific specifically uh, to build additional middleware uh, servers. And we didn't expose the OSGI programming model to uh, end uh, developers. Uh, so they had, had a different programming model depending on the depending on the whether, whether you are using the ESB, uh, whether you are using the app server, whether you are using the business rule server, and so on. And it was an incredibly productive framework uh, from WC2 point of view, uh, being able to um, uh, get this, uh, get the servers uh, up and running quickly, and also uh, mixing and matching uh, services and uh, features based on the runtime requirements. And also it helped uh, to unify uh, security, logging, clustering across products. Uh, so we were uh, um, uh, ba basically when it comes to configuring uh, products, uh, moving one product uh, to the other, it was a very natural, uh, natural flow. And the, the same experience uh, as well for the end user. And then uh, you have the integration uh, space that's uh, again uh, providing uh, business value to your platform. So unified identity, being able to uh, connect to existing uh, enterprise identity uh, stores and also uh, using, uh, can be federating with other uh, identity vendors, uh, and then uh, having a common identity framework for your application so that when a new developer develops a service, or an application can leverage the existing uh, identity services. And also it can mean, uh, we, uh, mean uh, leveraging uh, existing sort of uh, security and ID security gateways that you already have uh, to provide uh, uh, new experiences. Uh, and also when it comes to uh, new experiences, uh, uh, when you also on the mobile space, uh, uh, one example would be uh, when you are developing a mobile app, uh, being able to leverage the existing uh, either Apple ID or Google account information to log user in, or can be uh, using uh, sort of user's uh, phone number to being able to log in is again important uh, for, from the user uh, point of view. And an example for unified user identity, uh, so I would encourage you to attend uh, the talk uh, that's given by uh, Nutanix, that's basically about uh, enhancing customer experience with the identity server, so that's happening on uh, Wednesday. And then you have uh, the identity and access management also playing a key part uh, of your business uh, enablement platform. And the other aspect is uh, uh, mobile and IoT. Uh, so e leveraging existing uh, user devices uh, and then uh, sort of uh, b uh, expanding your presence to mobile uh, devices as well. Uh, and also you are yeah, basically uh, in ways, ways of capturing uh, information from your mobile device uh, the, from the users are using is again uh, important to provide uh, context uh, aware services and responses and also uh, being able to push information uh, from where the user is uh, at. And an example for uh, using uh, mobile and IoT uh, to provide business value is again, I encourage you to attend this uh, talk by uh, Verifone. That's also happening on uh, Wednesday during the I IoT track 
uh, and, and this talk is about how Verifone sort of transformed their uh, sort of point of sale business uh, to take advantage of a new uh, engagement for the consumer as well as sort of the point of sale assistance uh, assistants that, that use the platform. And then uh, again, uh, providing uh, mobile and IoT uh, to uh, incorporating mobile and IoT into a platform to uh, provide uh, services. And again, uh, another key aspect uh, is uh, analytics. So you have to monitor what's uh, going on uh, within your enterprise. And uh, maybe uh, it, it's about monitoring uh, existing services, uh, identifying uh, load characteristics uh, that you have, and then uh, being able to take uh, actions. Uh, and also, uh, it's important to identify uh, uh, patterns of usage as well. Uh, so we've, uh, uh, that's a, another area that, uh, uh, that's becoming increasingly uh, important, being able to uh, identify real-time patterns and also uh, translate these patterns to uh, sort of actionable events that you can take to either do corrective actions or either take uh, any other uh, sort of changes to the business model that you have. And as you can see, uh, so these are the sort of the five uh, key areas uh, when you talk about also doing uh, uh, digital transformation uh, to uh, help you to become uh, like an enablement uh, or build an enablement uh, platform for your users and uh, consumers. And these business enablement platforms solve a specific business problems. So it uh, can be uh, different from one uh, sort of vertical uh, to the other. And it's uh, sort of uh, allow you to uh, develop applications uh, so that uh, other, use, uh, other business areas can benefit and then uh, utilize and uh, incorporate uh, so that you can provide business value. And also being able to uh, sort of highly available when the need arrives and then scale out uh, is uh, critical and also becomes easy when you adapt uh, containers. And also you need to be able to uh, repeatably deploy uh, your uh, solutions as well uh, and then uh, uh, and also uh, uh, take advantage of your data by exposing data as APIs, uh, and then uh, also uh, comply with the existing uh, compliance uh, rules. And then uh, having a platform is, uh, again, uh, fine, but you need to be able to sort of maintain it going forward, push patches, and then do uh, updates, and then uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, do regular maintenance is uh, another uh, critical uh, aspect. So when you are starting, do you need uh, all the components? So uh, my view would be no. So you can start with uh, based on uh, the application uh, needs uh, that you define, and then you can iteratively uh, add components uh, as you go along. Uh, but one key advantage is basically uh, or one uh, key view that you have excuse me, keep in mind is that uh, when you are defining a business solutions, uh, define the business solution sort of end to end, and then uh, you can uh, add uh, or you can uh, sort of incorporate all the non-functional requirements uh, into your solution as you go along. Uh, so, what what are the sort of the gains uh, that you have? Uh, so, uh, we've seen uh, using this approach, uh, uh, your architecture becomes much more uh, simpler. Uh, and uh, sort of you sort of don't fall into the trap of uh, over-engineering. Uh, so we've, uh, in the past we've seen where our customers try to design your system uh, f uh, for like uh, the actual system that you would need in five years. And uh, along the way, uh, they are basically struggling to uh, sort of justify the business value of it and then uh, the project ultimately being uh, canceled. So, uh, you need to be able to demonstrate business value as quickly as possible and then uh, sort of iteratively improve as you go along. And also you need to, uh, as the sort of your overall strategy, you have to plan for high availability. So that will come at, at a later stage, but uh, you, you don't have to sort of adapt uh, the high available requirements that you uh, would need eventually in, in the, into your first cut of the product. And it can mean uh, uh, basically uh, clustering the gateways uh, from a API management point of view, uh, making the key managers highly available or uh, making the internal uh, external publishing uh, uh, into multiple sort of DMZ zones and so on based on the requirements. But if you design uh, uh, 
for the simplest architecture and then you can basically, e it's easy to move, move uh, from there to complex architectures. And an established DevOps practice is again uh, uh, critical. So when you adapt containers, you would uh, probably, uh, and the, the customers who already use DevOps, uh, all, all already using containers will uh, agree uh, with this as well. The DevOps and the infrastructure aspect become much more critical to be able to manage the, the container environment and the, uh, how your containers uh, uh, create and then uh, uh, maintain your uh, infrastructure. And uh, when you're uh, developing an application, uh, uh, typically we, we see that uh, some uh, organizations just do an application and then uh, not worry about the platform. Uh, so there are sort of downsides to that as well. So we believe that thinking up a, a little bit ahead and then uh, try to do a, try to uh, create a business platform uh, will, uh, will uh, allow you to be much more effective when you are, when you have complex business requirements uh, down the line. And also uh, when, when, when there are business problems, how do you do this? So, uh, uh, so uh, one way to uh, keep in mind is that uh, you can always do a sort of uh, quick experiments uh, and then, uh, uh, and then uh, sort of fail fast and then so I, I iterate from there onwards. And that's uh, about...